What is up ladies and gentlemen, it is the one and only CJ the Cheese DJ here and we're back with another ARC Insight video and today we're looking at, you guessed it obviously, you guys can tell, the Dire Bear and the Thylocolio. Now these guys, the Thylocolio has just dropped for the PlayStation 4, the new update literally came out last night I believe. Um, so we're trying to get on this as soon as we can for you guys and we're going to be comparing their stats today. Before we start though, I just want to say a, a quick thank you very much guys for watching, all the new subscribers that have come along while I'm gone. I'm officially saying now that I've come back from my holiday. If you didn't know, I did go on a 12-day leave. I'm just on a holiday, but we're back now, so we're going to get back into some ARK Insight videos. But without further ado, let's get into it. Now, as you can tell, the Thylocolia and the Dire Bear, they're pretty much the same size. If you look at them closely, they're, they're pretty closely related in size. However, the Thylocolia has 700 health. You can see they're 700 health, while the Dire Bear only has 400, which is, in my opinion, strange, considering the Dire Bear should be the stronger one. Um, just because he looks a lot beefier than the Thylocolio does. But anyway, we're not going to really dis disregard that too much. So you can see there, he's got 400 health, 500 stamina, uh, oxygens, all that. All this is all his base stat. They're both spawned in at level 1. So their stats are all at the base level and we're going to be looking at them. Now the Thylocolio has 400 stamina, whereas the Dibear has 500 stamina. We're going to test out how much this equates to running. Uh, further on in the video. However, a unique fact about the Dire Bear is that his movement speed is 226. Now that is his base movement speed. Now the reason it is 222.6, I think it was 222.6, yeah, is because as he sprints he gains speed. So the more he sprints the faster he becomes until he reaches that base speed of 222.6. While the Thylocolia only has the base speed of 130, which you can see right there. Without further ado though, we're going to get into their stamina, see how long it takes for them to complete the course that we've set up, and everything else, guys. Next up, guys, we took a look at their movement speed. So we managed to complete the course. The Thylocolio took 6 seconds to complete the course, which you can see here from flag to flag, which is relatively fast for a base movement speed of 130. He managed to complete it in 6 seconds, and now we'll take a look at the Dire Bear. The Dire Bear was next, and he managed to complete the course in 6 seconds as well. Regardless of his movement speed due being 226, he still managed to complete it in 6 seconds. However, he wasn't at full speed, that was just his starting sprint speed. However, if we brought the Thylocolio's movement speed up to 222.6, he would have the same amount, he would complete the course in the same amount of time as the Dire Bear would at full speed, which we tested earlier in the video. We then took a look at their stamina and how long they could stay in run speed for. And the Dire Bear lasted a surprising long time. He lasted for a total of 35.5 seconds while sprinting at full speed. So pretty much sprinting because his regular startup speed and his full sprinting speed take up the same amount of stamina as they do for everything else. We then tested the Thylocolio's stamina. And he managed to sustain sprint speed for almost double that of the Dire Bear. He managed to maintain it for 58 seconds, which is a pretty incredible feat considering he only has 400 stamina. So, you know, that was minus jumping, so we did not include jumping into that equation. If we included jumping, he would last a lot shorter than 58 seconds. We then tested their turning radius, which is pretty good in my opinion. Both of them had very good turning radiuses. You can see here the Dire Bear's turning radius is very tight, small circle there while walking. His sprinting one, however, is, is not substantially different in my opinion. I still think it's relatively close to... Um, it's original turning speed. It's got quite a small loop of turning when it comes to turning at sprinting speeds at this fast, which is easily able to outmaneuver a T-Rex in my opinion. The T-Rex will be swinging around looking for you while you're run out running in circles. The Thylocolio had a pretty similar turning radius to the Dire Bear. His turning radius was slightly larger than the Dire Bear's in my opinion, by the looks of it, while walking. However, his sprinting one was roughly the same as the Dire Bear's, if not a little bit tighter. So, you know, these guys are pretty much equal on their turning radius ability. We then decided to take a look at their ability to swim in water. And to say we were thoroughly disappointed is an understatement. You can see here the Dire Bear is just a leisurely stroller through the cascading waters of the ocean. I definitely wouldn't recommend taking this guy for cross water journeys. You'll be stuck in the water for a very long time. The Thylocolio, on the other hand, was definitely the clear winner. You can see here he just swims through the water at a very fast pace. He's quite fast in the water, and if he leveled up his movement speed quite a bit, he would be very fast in the water, to say the least. We then took a look at their melee damage. Now, the Dire Bear has two attacks. He has his primary attack, which you can see there, and his secondary attack, which is a poor swipe. Now, the secondary attack does much more damage, well, it does more damage than the primary attack. Now, 
The primary attack does a base damage of 50, so all we have to do is multiply that by here the amount of melee damage he has, which is 125, and that gives us the amount of 62. So each strike of his bite, which you can see here, does 62 damage. However, his poor attack, which is the stronger one, however you're limited by a certain amount of range as well as stamina use, does a base damage of 65, and we times that by his base melee damage, which is 125.8, and that gives us the amount of 81. So per Paul strike, he does 81 damage to a dino. The Thylacolio's melee damage is only 121.9. However, his base melee damage is... 40. The, th the Thylacolio has a base melee damage of 121.9, which you can see there. His base amount of damage that he can do with his one primary attack, he does not have a secondary attack like the Dire Bear, he does a base damage of 40. So all in all, this gives us the amount of 48 per strike against dinos. That's how much damage the Thylacolio does against other dinos, which was 48. The Dye Bear is the clear winner in terms of melee damage, easily trumping that of the Thylacolio. However, the Dye Bear does not have the extra ability of jumping that the Thylacolio does. As you know, the Thylacolio is new to the game, and he has the ability to jump as well as climb up redwood biome trees, as well as the walls of structures, which you can see here if it decides to work, which it didn't decide to work. So he is able to actually climb up the structures of walls as well as, there you go, you can see there. And from that position, he can actually go into a prowl mode, which I will try and, there we go. And he actually has a pounce attack, which pins players to the ground and indicates an extra effect on them. Next up, we took a look at their jumping ability. And obviously the die bear can't jump, guys. Come on, like, look at him. I feel sorry for the poor guy. He's not able to jump with his stumpy little legs. However, the Thylacolio, however, had quite a jump distance on him. You can see there, there is a huge amount of jump speed, jump distance between the flag and the Thylacolio, showing that the Thylacolio is definitely a better jumper than the Dire Bear, which I kind of feel sorry for because he can't jump. As you can see from the chart, a level 50 Thylacolio will take 14 Trank Arrows to knock out, whereas the Dire Bear will take a total of 26 Trank Arrows to knock out. Now, that's with the intervals in between which is quite a large difference in between the two. However, the torpor depletion between the Dire Bear and the Thylacolio is almost half, is almost double of each other, sorry. The Thylacolio torpor depletes at 4.2 per second, while the Dire Bear depletes at 2.5 per second, which is quite a big difference in terms of narcotics required. We then took a look at their stat increments, and the Dire Bear came on top of most stats in comparison to the Thylacolio. The Dire Bear had a greater stamina gain, greater oxygen gain, greater weight gain, as well as a greater movement speed gain, which you'll see in this following chart. Whereas the Thylacolio only had a greater increment gain in the Next health. Next up, we took a look at their special abilities. Now, as I already mentioned earlier, the Thylacolio has the ability to climb trees and use that extra pounce attack on victims, as well as the ability to climb up base walls. However, the Dire Bear does not have as many abilities, but he does have the ability to dual gather. He's able to gather berries as well as meat and other things from dinos. So meat and hide he's able to gather from dinos as well, which is rather useful. As well as this, his movement speed is quite high for a, very, for a base level dino. If you increase that a few levels, you'll be finding yourself with a very powerful, very fast dino. I definitely recommend taming up the Dire Bear just for his dual ability to gather meat as well as berries. Now... You obviously have the Therizinosaurus, however, I would recommend the Dire Bear over the Therizinosaurus for the beginning of the game. Once you decide to get high level tier stuff, as well as the ability to tame the high level stuff, as well as high dinos, definitely go after Therizinosaurus, but for in between that, definitely go for the Dire Bear. He's also able to gather fiber with his attacks as well. The Thylacolio, on the other hand, only has the ability to gather meat off other dinos, which makes him at a loss, in my opinion. He is still rather fast and very well suited for raiding and PvP. However, his ability to only gather meat does not make him a very good harvester dino or an all-around dino, in my opinion. Next up, everyone's favourite part, we set them upon each other. Now, we've spawned in higher level ones for this purpose of the fight, and we are giving the Thylacolio the advantage due to him having the lower melee damage, while the Dire Bear has two attacks, his primary and secondary. So you can see there we've just unclaimed the Thylacolio and left him on aggressive. We are now going to sit back and watch the carnage and do a quick summary of the two. Alrighty, and here we go, they are underway. And you can see here already that the Thylacolio has gotten in two attacks before the Dire Bear has been able to attack. Now the Dire Bear is not using his secondary attack, he's still using his primary attack which still does a larger amount of damage than the Thylacolio's does. 
Now, between the two, my opinion of the two is, is different. You've got the Dire Bear, which is an all-around tank. He's got quite a bit of health. However, he doesn't have as much health as the Father Collier, which you can see here he's kind of losing. We're just going to quickly glitch the game, apparently. You can see that he's just killed the Dire Bear. We're going to claim the Father Collier. And you can see here, the Father Collier wasn't too close to death. A few, if the Dire Bear had been using his secondary attack to attack the Phyla Collio, I had no doubt that the Phyla Collio would have died. The only reason the Phyla Collio survived is because he had the larger health pool than the Dire Bear. However, as I was saying before, the Dire Bear is more suited to single-player kind of worlds, I guess you could say, where the Phyla Collio is better suited for PvP purposes, as he's got the ability to climb the walls that I demonstrated, as well as you can use him as a base defense kind of dino, because you, all you do is turn around, set him like that, and I'm pretty sure you can hop off him. And you can see that he's up there, ready to pounce on any enemies that come your way, which is rather well for trapping enemy PvPers, if you leave them in a high structured base. So, all in all guys, my Opinion of the two is definitely tame both of them up if you don't have a dual meat and berry gatherer like a Therizinosaurus or you just need a good traversing mount such as the Dire Bear which can cover large distances very quickly if you pump your stamina up quite a bit. So all in all guys, both you should get both of these guys especially the Violet Collier, he's just called the ability to climb trees I reckon that's pretty amazing. But for now guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys, oh, 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 let's, let's, let's get this sorted, hopefully we gotta, we gotta do our outro. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like. I'd appreciate it. As well, tell me what you guys would like to see. But before we end the video, here's just a quick summary table of all the stats of the dinos. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.